Okay, guys. So uh, you got to bear with me here, because uh, basically the plan for the plan for the the video, the intro, the, there was gonna be a joke, which is that I was gonna be wearing um, a Thomas the Tank Engine costume, because you know, like ticket to ride, uh, trains. My name, uh, my name is Thomas, uh, and I could be Thomas the Tank Engine for the for the you know, it'd be a good, it'd be a good costume. I had the yellow paint and I had the um, the the face paint, but I ran out of blue paint. Um, sooner than I expected, and I'm just, I, w I want to make it clear that I, I did try very hard, and I, you just can't make fun of me, okay? Like, the costume does not look, it doesn't look great, and I think that the, the most important thing is that people don't make fun of me or laugh at me. I don't want to see any comments that say, haha, Tom looks so silly and goofy, he looks like a silly goose in a silly costume. No, I tried, re I tried really hard, okay? I really did. Right, give me one second. There wasn't, there was no space for the microphone um, to go, so I'm holding it, which is why the audio sounds. Look, I, I know that people are laughing at me. I know you think it looks silly, but I'm gonna try. There'll be another time we'll review another train game. I'll do, I'll do better then. But this is all I've got. There, I'm not even gonna wear it for the full video. I was just gonna wear it for the opening. Um, and so I just, just don't, just don't laugh at me, okay? Please, I'm trying. This will probably be a short review. It's hard to get too deep into this game without diving headfirst into spoilers, so let's get to the meat of the matter as quickly as possible. Ticket to Ride Legacy of the West is a respectable but altogether too safe legacy game. It's also one of the only legacy games I've played that I did not finish. I had my mind made up on it about eight games into its 12 game campaign. And at that point, I didn't want to keep playing. I didn't want to see what's next, and I had next to no investment in the progression of the story. I wanted to play something else with the lovely people who put their spare time in my trust. This feels like the swan song of the legacy title to me. Obviously, it's not actually the last. There are a whole bunch more games and properties that could receive a legacy treatment, but this box being so unsurprising has definitely created a feeling within me that the space of a legacy game has been about as thoroughly explored as it can be at present by those with the means to explore it. A box like this from these designers and this publisher feels like it should contain a leap forward, but instead it stays pretty firmly in place. It's respectable, it's fun enough, but it's just not very exciting. So, what's the deal here? Ticket to Ride Legacy of the West starts you off with a sliver of the map, just the east coast, constructed from these blobby jigsaw pieces. Throughout the course of your campaign, each player is going to thrust their fledgling train company into these completely empty and untouched lands, building and rebuilding a network that crisscrosses North America. The disclaimer at the back of the rulebook is like, we know American railroads were really bad, but instead of choosing a different theme, we just did this one anyway. Whoopsie. Sure, a load of bad stuff happened back then, but while designing this experience, we found no way to include these elements within the lighter theme of the game. Well, maybe choo choo choose uh, a theme that's more appropriate for a lighter game then, if lightness is the core quality that you're dead set on here. Anyway, the means by which you build these railways are the same as in base game Ticket to Ride, with just three simple actions available to you on your turn. You can either take two train cards from the display here, add them to your hand, or you can play cards from that hand to form routes on the board. The more trains played, the more space is filled. Lastly, you can draw ticket cards from this ticket deck, which give you endgame scoring conditions reliant on connecting the two cities with your trains. The difference is that routes do not directly convert into points here. Filling a massive 8 space route won't innately score you a game winning amount. Endgame scoring is determined instead by the tickets you score, the number of trains you have left at the end of the game, and any money acquired by filling your own colour of route. That's everything. This is how simple your first session of Ticket to Ride Legacy starts, and it's tightly wound around the core of what makes Ticket to Ride good. That tiny cramped map leads to deliberately denying routes that you can see are key to your opponent, but also work for your own strategy. The game absolutely slams shut at its close, making the build up to that event tense and bubbly. It's fast, it's clean, it's good. 
And then you get hit with a flurry of twists to the formula that simmer your excitement. A deliriously tactile and joyous gimmick component. These delightful scoring sheets that tuck into your personal player treasury. And finally, most excitingly of all, the winning player gets a choice of which frontier you're going to expand into next. The Great Plains, the Open Range, the Haunted Wastes, and uh, Florida. What adventures will await you next? And, and what does await you out here? Um, a series of small expansions that are pleasant, gentle, and yeah, fun enough, but not revolutionary or particularly exciting. They're mostly fine. They're good, but they're not a compelling enough reason to return to a game that gets baggier and less interesting with each new system added. Spoiler warning here if you don't want to have the foggiest clue of what twists are in this box, but in our games we unlocked the following. Player powers that are fine. Connecting the cities will get you some points now. Set collection. Negative status effects. Set collection again. A push your luck game, kind of, but not really. I can't remember what happened in Florida. They're all fine, they're just nice, but alongside a ballooning map and a larger number of possible tickets that players can have, it all just gets a little bit soupy. Judging player intention becomes pointless, pulling off a big group feels less special, and even if you did want to dive headfirst into the new stuff, your tickets at the start of the game might turn that idea into a tactical blunder. Yes, it is more, but it is more without direction. I never felt more than a simple, oh, cool, at any of these changes because they do not do enough to change the fabric of the game you are playing 12 times in a row. You might think it's unfair for me to reduce these new additions to just their bare mechanics, but there are legacy games where the tweaks a little more than that, and yet they sing more boldly than this one does. Perhaps the best way to explain this is by comparing Ticket to Ride Legacy with two of our favourite Legacy games. Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and My City. Pandemic Legacy makes its Legacy aspects tie beautifully into a narrative that's simple but captivating. The twists have weight because they exceed the bounds of their mechanics and enter the imaginative space of the players. It's a story that you're playing through, its Legacy elements synergistic with the beats of that narrative. Pandemic Legacy ended with a board that was scarred with past decisions, a totemic reminder of the journey your players had been on. My City, on the other hand, has absolutely zero narrative justification for its twists. It's unbelievably thin, but My City's hook is its continual reinvention, completely shifting the goalposts each session, building a new game from the same pieces each chapter that manages to maintain the same steady scope and scale. There is a player narrative built from these mechanical shifts, each game a distinct and unique beat, a more informal and mechanical narrativization. Ticket to Ride slices right down the middle. It has a languid text narrative paired with a ballooning mechanical palette that dilutes the core of the game you are playing with little in the way of reinvention. Now obviously Ticket to Ride isn't the kind of game that's going to provide you with a stunning text-based narrative. It would be foolish to expect such a thing from a game like this. But the ebbs and flows of new mechanics are hardly felt in this one, in stark contrast to something like My City. The middle of our campaign felt staid and inert as new point scoring opportunities opened up and little else. I do not think this is the result of incompetency from anyone involved in the creation of this game. Far from it. Its focus is just centred around trying to make a safer approach to the legacy title, more approachable, more smooth, more round, more broadly enjoyable. The thing is, it sacrifices moments for that purpose. You finish your campaign with a board that's customised in the loosest sense of the word, lacking in personality, flavour or story. It's safe, it's fine, it's just a bit of a shame. This has been a pretty negative review, and I think it largely comes from a place of disappointment. The thing that really got me into board games proper was playing through Risk and Pandemic Legacy with my friends. These games and their new emerging genre was just so exciting to me, a real advancement in what you could do with just cardboard, plastic and stickers. They boldly expanded the possibility space of board games and nailed the landing first time turning legacy gimmicks into essential, exciting games. 
Those games made your decisions feel weighty and consequential. Their twists and tweaks gave some real emergent narrative oomph. There's a reason that Pandemic Legacy is rated the number one thematic game of all time on BoardGameGeek. And so to see legacy mechanics step back in the areas where I most enjoyed them, where I most felt like they were fresh and exciting in favour of a cleaner, duller, more simple experience, it, it's a feeling that's hard to shake. It stings a little bit. The target audience for Ticket to Ride Legacy is everyone, but I feel like it will truly capture nobody. So I don't recommend Ticket to Ride Legacy of the West. It's simply too expensive for just fine, except perhaps for families who are hooked on Ticket to Ride. I'd still recommend any given edition of Ticket to Ride to families looking to start a collection. The core of this game is Ticket to Ride, which is still a perennial delight. I'd also thoroughly recommend any of the Legacy games previously recommended by this channel because they're still great, they're still perfect places to start for people interested in dabbling in these more long-term campaign games with narrative twists. Just don't start with this one. The thing is, I'm hopeful for the designers that take the lessons of Legacy games further. The core of what made these exciting was never really the components and the stickers. It was the shared evolution, the continual narrative, the hooks that would bring people back week after week to sit and play games at the table. There's plenty of games still doing stuff like that. The soul of Pandemic Legacy lives on in a whole bunch of titles. It just might not be in this one.